our tutorial probability distributions. Probability distributions consist of all possible values that a discrete or continuous random variable can have and their associated probability of being observed. Classical or a priori probability distribution is theoretical, while empirical or a posteriori probability distribution is experimental. This topic is part of Business Statistics with our course. Feel free to take a look at course curriculum by clicking link at the description box below. This tutorial has an educational and informational purpose and doesn't constitute any type of forecasting, business, trading or investment advice. Please read full tutorial disclaimer at the end of the video. An example of probability distribution is the normal probability distribution, which consists of all possible values that a continuous random variable can have and their associated probability of being observed. Its probability distribution function is bell-shaped, symmetric from its mean, and mesocurtic. Standard normal probability distribution consists of normal probability distribution with mean zero and unit variance. Any normal probability distribution can be converted into a standard normal probability distribution through continuous random variable standardization. As a formula, normal probability distribution density function is equal to 1 divided by the square root of 2 times pi multiplied by sigma squared. Sigma corresponds to the standard deviation and sigma squared corresponds to the variance which is then multiplied by the exponential of minus and within the numerator we have x which is a continuous random variable minus mu which is its arithmetic mean that result to the power of 2 and then we divide it by 2 times sigma squared. Normal probability distribution has a mean equals to mu and the standard normal probability distribution has a mean equal to 0. Normal probability distribution has a variance equals to sigma squared and the standard normal probability distribution has a variance equals to 1. Normal and standard normal probability distribution has a skewness equals to 0. Normal and standard normal probability distribution has an excess kurtosis equals to 0. The reason for this is that normal and standard normal probability distribution have a kurtosis equals to 3. Continuous random variable standardization is calculated as follows. It is equal to x, which is the corresponding continuous random variable, minus mu, which is its arithmetic mean, and we divide that result by sigma, which is its standard deviation. Great, so let's go into R Studio so that we can study normal probability distribution with greater detail. Excellent, so here we are within R Studio. The first step within the tutorial is to load its packages. We do so with library function and we'll be using for this tutorial QuantMod and Performance Analytics. So we select these two code lines, we click Run or Ctrl Enter on the keyboard, which is equivalent. The next step is we are going to do our data reading. For that we create a data variable, which we do so with read.csv and then within that function we have the name of the data file probability distribution data.txt. So this is a plain text file with .csv or comma separated values stored within the working directory. Comma header equals to true. So we select that code line there, we click run or control enter on the keyboard, and we see right here within the global environment that it created a data object as a data frame. So if we click on the spreadsheet kind of icon, it opens the data object. Within it, we have two columns, dates and SPY adjusted. SPY is the ETF investment vehicle which intends to replicate the Standard & Poor's 500 index. Adjusted because this includes adjusted close prices which were adjusted for dividends and splits. Here we have data with a daily frequency from the beginning of 2007 to the end of 2015, therefore 9 years of data. So going back into the code file, the next step is we're going to create another variable which we're going to name SPY and this is going to be an extensible time series. So we do so with XTS function, from data we're selecting the second column, comma, order by equals as date, that same data, 
object, we select its first column. So we select the code line again and click Run or Ctrl Enter on the keyboard. So notice that it created a second object here within the global environment, SPY, and it's an XTS or Accessible Time Series. So here we click on the spreadsheet kind of icon and it opens the object for us. And within SPY we can see the same data as within the data object, but now the dates became its index. So going back into the code file, the next step with the data is to calculate the standardized daily returns. So the first step is we create this variable named RSPY and we're calculating daily return of SPY. So SPY is the extensible time series which includes those adjusted close prices. So this will calculate the arithmetic rate of return in this specific case with a daily frequency. And the next step is we are going to standardize those daily returns. Therefore, we create this other variable with an S at the beginning, so we know they are the standardized, so S, R, S, P, Y, and we use scale function for the previously calculated daily returns. So this scale function, what it's doing is it subtracts the mean and to that result divides it by the standard deviation. So we select those two code lines, click Run or Ctrl Enter on the keyboard again. So the next step is we're going to print those standardized daily returns descriptive statistics. So first we begin with the mean. So we have the mean of those standardized daily returns. So we select that code line, click run or control enter on the keyboard. Notice that those standardized daily returns have a mean of 1.09. Notice here that this is with scientific notation exponential of minus 17, meaning that we will need to move the decimal point 17 places to the left. Therefore, they had a mean close to zero as expected because of their corresponding standardization. Then we're going to print their standard deviation. So we have SD for standard deviation of those standardized daily returns. We select that code line, click Run or Ctrl Enter on the keyboard, and we see that standardized daily returns have a standard deviation of one as expected because of that corresponding standardization. And now we're going to print their skewness. So we select this code line, the skewness of those standardized daily returns, and we click Run or Ctrl Enter on the keyboard, and we see that those standardized daily returns have a positive skewness. And then here we are going to print their excess kurtosis. The excess kurtosis is done with kurtosis function of those standardized daily returns. So we select the code line, we click Run or Ctrl Enter on the keyboard, and we see that those standardized daily returns had a positive excess kurtosis. So going down, the next step is we're going to study the standard normal probability distribution. For that, the first step is we are going to do a chart of a density histogram of the standardized daily returns. And on top of it, we are going to plot a curve overlay with the standard normal probability distribution. So here, with hist of those standardized daily returns, comma frequency equals to false, if we select the code line there, click Run, or Ctrl Enter on the keyboard, we see the corresponding chart with that histogram. So notice here, on the vertical axis, we have density, and in this specific case, as empirical probability. On the horizontal one, we have the number of standard deviations from the arithmetic mean. As mentioned previously, we are going to add the standard normal probability distribution as a curve overlay. We do so with curve, and within it we have d norm, that's the density function for the normal distribution of x, with mean equals to zero and standard deviation equals to one. Therefore, standard normal probability distribution. Colored in blue, add equals to true, and yaxt equals to none. Then the legend at the top right, colored in blue, with LTY equals to 1, a solid line, and the legend is going to be, as we can see here, normal probability distribution with mean 0, standard deviation 1, meaning standard normal probability distribution, and with CX equals to 0.8, that's the proportion of the legend to the rest of the chart. So we select these two code lines, again click Run, or Ctrl Enter on the keyboard, and we see here within the histogram the curve overlay. It's being colored in blue right here, and according to its legend, we see normal distribution, mean zero, standard deviation one, meaning standard normal probability distribution. So looking at the results of those corresponding standardized daily returns, descriptive statistics, and 
comparing them with that corresponding histogram, specifically focusing on skewness and kurtosis. First of all, we see that those standardized daily returns have a positive skewness. Therefore, as we can see here within the chart, they had a longer right tail and therefore corroborating that positive skewness. And then here we have the corresponding kurtosis and we see that they had a positive excess kurtosis. And if we go back into the histogram, we see that those corresponding standardized daily returns histogram had a distribution which was more picked and with thicker tails compared to that normal distribution, in this specific case, standard normal probability distribution, therefore corroborating those corresponding results we saw here within the console. Excellent. So now that we've finished studying standard normal probability distribution, let's go back into the slides. And as mentioned previously, this tutorial has an educational and informational purpose and doesn't constitute any type of forecasting, business, trading or investment advice. Please pause the video now so you can read the full tutorial disclaimer. Okay, so with this, we finish this tutorial. Thank you for watching.